Our story begins with Kobe Bryant, who was accused of rape in 2003. All you need to know about this case is that he was defended by lawyer Pamela Mackey, who also defended Casey Anthony and Harvey Weinstein. I will not go into the sordid details of that night, but what transpired is nothing short of bizarre. After the rape case, Kobe signed a seven-year contract for over $136 million. Kobe had a major transformation and created an alter ego called the Black Mamba. Between 2006 and 2015, he was deep in Chinese endeavors, including the Kobe Bryant China Fund, and played in the 2008 Beijing Olympics. His career rocketed, and he constantly thanked the Black Mamba. Was this his admittance of MK Ultra Mind Control? How many times in pop culture have we seen famous celebrities take on alter egos? He once said, I had to separate myself. It felt like there were so many things coming at once. It was just becoming very, very confusing. I had to organize things. So I created the Black Mamba. If you are new to this subject, you might be thinking, it's just an act. It's just Hollywood. It's not. At the highest levels, you cannot reach mass fame without sacrificing something or being controlled. Just ask Roseanne Barr about MKUltra in Hollywood. You've been a Hollywood insider for so long, yet you've been vocal for so long. I mean, how challenging is it to see your colleagues across Hollywood lacking for the Obama administration when they have so much power and influence that they can single-handedly shape the dialogue and so many people are watching them? Well, uh, I think that, you know, this is a culture of fear and um, nobody's more afraid than people in Hollywood. They're afraid that they'll drop out of the top, you know, they're afraid that they'll drop from the bottom of the pyramid. I, I go to Hollywood parties or, you know, occasionally I go to Oscar parties and things like that. And people, big stars, people will grab me by the arm and take me aside and say, I just want to thank you for the things you say. And it blows my mind, but that, that's the culture. It's a culture of fear for sure. Um, you know, and, and it's a, a big culture of uh, mind control too. MK Ultra mind control rules in Hollywood. If, if if you don't know, Google that and look into it. Kobe then went on to write a number of occult children's books involving inner magic. The last children's book he was writing was deleted by the author after Kobe died. The author claimed, "I deleted it. It wouldn't benefit anyone." His basketball stardom continued to rise, making millions, getting more endorsement deals, which eventually led him to his next endeavor. In 2013, Kobe Bryant partnered with Jeff Stivel and created Bryan Stivel, a venture capital firm focusing on developing technology, gaming, data, and media. For those that don't know, Jeff Stivel looks like Charles Manson and has started pro-transhumanism companies that implanted computer chips onto people's brains to enable control of electrical devices through thought. He innovated the convergence of mind and machine, among other creepy ventures. When Bryant and Stiebel went public at the New York Stock Exchange, Bryant was introduced to Cindy B. Cindy is the creator of an online children's education initiative called VIP Kid, which is backed by the Chinese Communist Party out of Beijing. Chinese President Xi stated, All education will be the training basis for the next red generation, creating the future socialists. After meeting Cindy, Kobe wrote her a $1 million check to help fund VIP Kid. VIP Kid went on to recruit 600 students and 3,000 teachers from the United States. If you're up on current events, you will know there is a divide among Taiwan and China. Taiwan wants independence and the U.S. is one of their biggest allies. Some of the teacher recruits for VIP kids were discussing the Taiwan issue, and they were kicked out and sent home. Wendy Dang is the only board member of VIP kids. Dang is from the Chang province of China, but currently resides in New York City. 
She has a famously cozy relationship with Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. In 2017, counterintelligence officials warned Jared Kushner that Wendy Deng might be using their relationship to spy for the Chinese government. Wendy was also married to media mogul Rupert Murdoch. And let's not forget Dianne Feinstein and her Chinese spy, her driver of 30 years. There is a list on Wikipedia of the known Chinese spies who were caught, and it has become quite the concern in 2020 amidst the coronavirus outbreak. Another investor of VIP Kids is a Chinese billionaire, Jack Ma, from the Alibaba Group. Jack Ma hired Kobe Bryant to participate in a startup called Fun88, which is an online casino and gaming website, which is now currently owned by Joseph C. Lewis. Joseph C. Lewis teamed up with George Soros on foreign exchange trade deals and is the main investor in Tavistock, and in 2007 made an $864 million investment in Bear Stearns. Jeffrey Epstein joined Bear Stearns in 1976 to climb the social ladder by giving the bank's wealthiest clients, such as Seagram President Edgar Bronfman, on tax mitigation strategies. If you remember, Edgar Bronfman's daughter Claire pleaded guilty in the Nexium sex slave case and is now in prison. In the book, Man of the World, The Future Endeavors of Bill Clinton, page 414 mentions how Kobe Bryant was signed on to Taneo Sports in 2014 and went on to donate money to Tavistock Group and the Tavistock Clinics. One of the best kept secrets of the Tavistock Group is that it's funded by the Rockefeller family and the Chinese Communist Party. Important figureheads involved in Tavistock are Henry Kissinger and Sigmund Freud. This institution is infamous for their mind control experiments, control on the world's agriculture, eugenics, and depopulation. Why is Kobe Bryant donating money to these communist institutions? Now let's get into the pharmaceutical connection. John Kapoor, the big investor of high-tech pharmaceuticals and executive of Insys Therapeutic Corporation, is now serving 66 months in prison for lacing his Black Mamba Hyper Rush energy pills with opioids. Kobe Bryant was in the process of suing the company for brand infringement. Now with this case, we have Insys Therapeutics, an Acorn pharmaceutical company, which owns high-tech pharmaceuticals. Kobe Bryant was scheduled to go to court on January 29th, 2020 to expose these companies, but he died on January 26th. What is so strange about this? Other than the fact that Kobe died, I discovered that Jeff Steibel owns high shares and stocks in all three of these pharmaceutical companies. Teva Pharmaceuticals and Novartis were involved in the largest cartel case in history involving price fixing of their drugs. This was so huge, it involved 44 states. Did you even hear about this? Apotex is a Canadian pharmaceutical company created by Barry Sherman, a member of the Jewish Congress in Canada. Barry Sherman and his wife were involved in a honeypot scandal of sending a woman to Teva Pharmaceuticals in Israel to seduce a high-ranking executive to get him to extract information about the patent for Azelect the cure for Parkinson's disease. They were successful in stealing the patent, and although he didn't admit to patent infringement, he dubbed himself the Robin Hood of pharmaceuticals. As a result, Teva out of Israel lost billions of dollars over this loss. Barry and his wife Honey were found strangled to death in their home in 2017. I also discovered that Apotex was a partner of the Clinton Foundation, and they provided generic vaccines to the Clinton's Haiti Project. Whether they knew too much about the Clintons or were murdered by the Mossad, you be the judge. Speaking of murder, Patrick Soon Xiong was a mentor to Kobe Bryant, bought the LA Times and owned lots of stock in Teva and Novartis, the companies Kobe was going to expose. Anthony Fauci went on record stating that he was proud of the work he did while working with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Clinton Initiative of Haiti. Fauci is also a member of the Populations Institute with Bill Gates. COVID-19 is starting to look like a political tool used for global positioning, which brings me to the Belt and Road Initiative. The Belt and Road Initiative was launched in 2013 by President Xi to develop and collect investments that would stretch from Asia to Europe, significantly expanding China's economic and cultural influence on the world. 
Some countries, like the United States, saw this as China's Trojan horse that could potentially have negative consequences and allow them to expand their military. The countries that have aligned themselves with China's political initiative are not being hit with COVID. The countries that are at odds with the initiative have been hit hard. Coincidence? There is another theory about Trump's trade deal with China. Could that have been another victim of the COVID-19 outbreak? The Parkright Institute bought the coronavirus patent in 2018, which is funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Novartis bought the coronavirus patent from the Kiron Corporation in 2006. During the same year, Novartis bought out the Kiron Corporation and it no longer exists. You can still see the coronavirus filing of 2004 on the U.S. and patent trademark website. So if this was a Chinese psyop, why are there thousands of Chinese dying from COVID-19? If you look at the provincial map of COVID-19 affected areas of China, you will see that Beijing is hardly affected. Beijing is the epicenter of communist power. Where do Bill and Melinda Gates have their office in China? Beijing. When you look at the areas being hit hard by COVID-19, you have Guangdong, which was the hotspot for SARS back in 2003, Wuhan, where the infamous Wuhan Institute is located, and Hong Kong, coincidentally where the anti-government protests were taking place just before COVID-19 broke out. Remember Daryl Murray, the general manager of the NBA, tweeted in support of the Hong Kong protesters? His tweet ended a long-time relationship with China, and Kobe Bryant never said a word. So where does this leave America? The answer is, I don't know. What I do know is this seems to be the biggest global conspiracy in the history of the world. Is this a communist takeover, or is China just a pawn for the global elite? If you aren't familiar with Project Bluebeam, I will give you a quick synopsis. It's basically the elitist's plan to take over the world. You can look more into it, but if this is right, we are living out scenario B. Does Trump have the situation under control, or is he, for the first time, not winning? I want to give a shout out to Larry Gators for helping me find the truth to this global conspiracy and helping me connect the dots. I will leave you with that to do your own critical thinking, and until then, stay safe out there, and don't stop questioning the world around you.